Hello, David Kaiser here on the campus of Brevard College in Brevard, North Carolina. I'm sitting at the console of the Jekyll Organ in the Porter Center. Now, the Porter Center is a special place for me personally because when I was in high school, I attended the Brevard Music Center, and many of the recitals took place here. So we all jumped in a bus, and um, it was like a field trip, and I was moved many times um, at the concerts that I heard here. But the thing is, the organ was usually covered up for opera production, so I didn't actually know an organ existed in this space, or I just didn't know really anything about organs back then. But now I'm really pleased and happy to experience and play this organ for the first time. And now Vance will introduce the instrument for you. cost about 1.2 million dollars. So we have a beautiful instrument here that is designed to last for a long time. <clears throat> Today we'll be playing music. Uh, I'll invite David to play and I'll start. Uh, we'll play music that holds um, uh, and demonstrates a lot of different uh, stops that are on the organ. So I think you'll enjoy what you hear. I am Lee Evans and I'm with the President's Office here at Brevard College. The Kirkpatrick Coleman organ that we've been talking about today is named in honor of Robert and Ruth Col Kirkpatrick Coleman, whose generous donation made building this organ a reality for the college. Both Colemans had deep ties to Brevard and their daughter, Dr. Clara Coleman West, was a former dean here. Hi, my name is Dr. Vance Reese and we're here at the Paul Porter Center on the Brevard College campus. So on behalf of President Joyce and the music department here and the fine arts department here and everybody here at Brevard College, I'd like to welcome you. Um, the Paul Porter Center was named after a former trustee of the college and his family was quite generous in um, building this, what is called the uh, Carnegie Hall of the Southeast. It's a beautiful hall. Uh, the Scott Concert Hall was named after uh, the Scots, and they, um, they built this hall specifically, actually the Paul Porter Center and the Scott, Scott Concert Hall was built specifically to house an organ. So as the building was being built, this is unusual to find in uh, uh, these circumstances, but the building was built in order to have an organ. So you can see there's a, where the organ should be in the middle of the balcony. So before uh, 03, before 2003, it looked like this. And then Dan Jekyll, an organ builder out of Duluth, Minnesota, um, built this organ with funds from the Kirkpatrick Coleman's, very generous donors. When the idea of the Porter Center was born, both Coleman's made it their, their dream to ensure that a pipe organ of this magnitude would be an integral part of the architecture. In keeping with the donor's desires, the casings and the cabinetry um, of part of this organ are made from indigenous Appalachian hardwoods, the white oak and yellow poplar. The ador they're adorned by uh, carvings, hand carvings of acorns, oak leaves, rhododendrons, and waterfalls, all very much a part of life here in Transylvania County. You can even see the key stops on the organ are uh, adornment motif of the waterfalls. I'm holding here the, um, the inaugural concert uh, program, and it was uh, given in September 13, 2003 by David Higgs. And this gives you an indication of what the organ uh, is designed to do. It is designed to be um, Bach specific, kind of North German. And uh, there was a realization later on that it really needs to do more than just that. So he started off with Bach, the Fantasy and Fugue in G minor. He played some Sphalink. Uh, he has some Sphalink to play, so we'll get a taste of that. Uh, so a 
late Renaissance composer. Uh, then Franck, so completely different, uh, the piece Héroïque, and then a soliloquy by David Conti, a modern piece by William Balcom, uh, another French piece by Le Fébure Véli, and a modern piece, more or less, by Maurice Durifay, so the, the suite for organ. So that was his concert, which was quite demanding. And David Hicks could do that sort of thing, and it was a great inaugural concert. So today you won't hear an inaugural concert, but you'll hear, you'll hear lots of different stops of what uh, this organ can do. Um, first, the principles. So on the grate, if I just draw 842 in the mixture, you have something like this. I'll put something corresponding in the pedal. So we have uh, no, a little bit of Lewandowski for the high holidays. Just playing 842 mixture, but what if we beef it up a la the romantic style? So we'll put on a little swell. Um, maybe a, throw a little reed in there, maybe the trumpet, and uh, couple that a little bit more on the pedal. And then it sounds a little bit more romantic, so not the bright sound, or the bright sound, but filled in a little bit. So you have... gives you a taste of the mixtures, both uh, baroque and romantic, then you could add to that. If you wanted more reeds uh, and maybe even the positif added in there, we might have something like this. So the, it's a ruk positif, so behind me is ruk and the positif is um, protecting me from the audience. So we have uh, this. Uh, we'll throw on a big 16-foot reed in the, the pedals. So there's a big bombastic sound for you. Um, let's move on to Svelink. So uh, Svelink didn't have quite that organ at his disposal. He was uh, Dutch, and he might have had something like this uh, little principle. I'll play one on the grate and then one on the swell. like this flute, it's called the Kverflöte. Uh, it has this charming little stop on the swell called the Trechtregal. Like any reed, it has, oh, that was with the diapason. Here it is by itself. So it's a very light uh, reed stop, probably shorter pipes on it, <clears throat> and uh, would have been found in Svelink's organ. Now let's see, I'll throw on a few other flutes so you get a feeling for that. Here's a four foot flute on the positive.
going to the, uh, so that loud sound we had a minute ago, um, I was showing this to, this is a fascinating thing for students to look at. So I'll try this. We have all these stops. And the kind thing that Dan Jekyll did is to, uh, so I have these things coupled in here. So if I press this note down, I'm going to get the positive and the swell to sound, to actually physically press those keys. But there's this lovely stop here called coupler assist. So now it's a much lighter action. It's not the heavy uh, stop. Uh, let's see, a little piece by Pachel Bell, another set of variations. So if we have uh, something that Pachel Bell might have had in his day, maybe we'll have 842 on the grate, and I'll contrast that with an 842 on the swell. even do that, 842 principles on the positive. What about a flute chorus? We have uh, something like this. Hmm. Those are lighter possibilities on the organ. Uh, let's see. This, let's go to the strings. Um, so anything in the French school from the mid-19th century would have to have strings uh, to it. And this, this is a particularly lovely set. I'll put the strings uh, without any flute, and then I'll add them in. This is a piece by Gerald Near called Land of Rest. <clears throat> you might recognize the tune when it comes in. It does have a swell pedal, which is nice. with the strings. Let's do a little bit with the flute added into it. This is where the tune will come in. Here's a particularly lovely stop. Um, it's the cornet on the grate, which doesn't go that low. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, all right, so we'll cut that part out and we'll try a we'll try the come horn. So after the strings get through introducing the tune, we have So there's a nice one um, on the positive that um, projects out to the hall. If you like French Baroque music, this cornet works pretty well. You can 
add something in the pedal. There are three really interesting things about this organ. I've never encountered them elsewhere. Uh, they're all on pedal studs down here. One is called Palkin, P-A-U-K period. I'm assuming Palkin is the what it's abbreviating. And it, uh, with, with a full organ or more or less full organ, you get kind of a struck sound like a timpani. <laughs> Here it is with the palette. And you get a drumming effect with the pedals. Um, I have seen this on organs um, at Zimbelstern. And this one, the speed is governed by a knob here, so you can make it go slower. That's about as much volume as you get. And if I look straight up, I can see a star turning. And that's the Stern uh, making the cymbal sound when it goes around. The one fun thing to do, let's, let's see if it actually has water in it to make sure it's working. It's called the Vogel, the bird. And it goes, yeah, there we are. So if I played some of those phalanx variations <laughs> with the bird, we get. So we get the bird proclaiming how green the trees and the grass are. <laughs>